What's up guys, if you're interested in getting sweet altars like these every month, you can do so by visiting our Patreon at patreon.com slash it resolves. What is going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Crack of Pack series. Today, we are opening up a pack of Shadows over Innistrad. This is something we open up pretty regularly, to be honest, on here, but there are quite a number of awesome cards in this set that hopefully we will get to open. Uh, of course, we're going to go through this as if it is a draft scenario. So, we are going to do the best we can to actually figure out what our first round draft pick would be and hopefully give you guys a little bit of info and insight into how you should be drafting. Uh, I will go ahead and say I'm not an expert. I did draft a little bit of this set. Uh, not a lot, not as much as uh, a lot of the new standard sets that I have been drafting, but I do know this set somewhat well. So we'll see what we get. Cathar's Companion, Companion excuse me, is our first card here. A 3-1 for 2 and a white. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, it gains indestructible until the end of the turn. Uh, I would find this very average, uh, is the way I would describe it. It is a 3-1 for 3, so power level's on curve, but the toughness, it's probably going to die pretty quickly. Uh, 9 times out of 10, the non-creature spell thing is going to be very irrelevant uh, in draft. Not always, of course. There's going to be combat tricks, things like that. This obviously gets quite a boost off of any combat trick, which is great. Excuse me. Uh, but in general, uh, you're looking to cast a lot more creatures than you are non-creature spells, at least in draft. Uh, and so 90% of the time, you're probably not going to really get that much of a benefit off of that. That's not to say you can't build around it. You can't get that value. That value is fantastic if you can get it. Um, excuse me. But in general... Not super exciting, definitely not something to first pick. Uh, Stitch Mangler is a 2-3 for 2 and a blue. It enters the battlefield tapped, and when it enters the battlefield, tap target creature and opponent controls. That creature does not untap during its controller's next untap step. We see this ability all across blue. It's a very blue style ability where you get that tempo out of a, uh, an opposing creature. So you tap it down. It can't tap the next turn. Uh, just really, really good. Gets you ahead on board a little bit. Um, a 2-3 that enters the battlefield tapped 4-3 is generally pretty bad, but with that effect, I would say this is definitely a serviceable 3-drop. I don't think it's amazing, but it's definitely better than the companion in my mind. Uh, it is also a zombie, so it probably has some synergies within this set, as zombies are pretty big here. So definitely, definitely like that card. Uh, Militant Inquisitor is a 2-3 for 2 and a white, and it gets plus 1, plus 0 for each equipment you control. Worth noting here, they do not have to be actually attached to him uh, to actually get that boost, which I think is actually pretty cool. Uh, in general, uh, I think if you're running any number of equipments, like two, three, maybe, uh, this is probably a serviceable three drop. I don't think it's an amazing one. Obviously, it's dependent on other cards and in draft. Try to shy away from that a little bit, but in general, I do think that this is okay. Not better than the Stitch Mangler, at least in my mind. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, Intrepid Provisioner, Provisioner, hope I'm saying that correctly, uh, is a 3-3 for 3 and a green. Uh, it does have Trample, and when it enters the battlefield, another target human you control gets plus 2, plus 2 until the end of the turn. Uh, I actually really like this card, so if you're in the human's deck, which is a very prominent one, uh, this just lets you be very, very aggressive, and I love that. I love cards like this that boost up your other creatures as soon as it hits the field, lets them swing in, do a lot of damage. And then you also are well set up for the next turn. It's just absolutely a great card. Uh, probably, uh, if you're going for the more aggressive strategy, this is definitely better than the Stitch Mangler. And I think in general, it's probably better. Uh, so I think so far, this is definitely the pick. Uh, Rush of Adrenaline is an instant for one red. Target creature gets plus two, plus one, and gains trample until the end of the turn. Uh, this is just a really good combat trick. It's efficient. Usually one mana combat tricks are fairly well positioned in any meta, uh, just because, as long as they're instant speed, I should say, just because you can usually squeeze them in, leave up one mana. It's not too much of a telling sign from the opponent side of things, but they do have to consider it. Uh, and I really like that. I love the ability to have to 
force your opponent into that position of playing around combat tricks. Uh, and even if they don't, you still get to leave up. If you can only leave up one mana, that's perfectly fine. That's all you need to cast this. So I like it for that reason. That being said, it is still a combat trick. Not super excited to first pick it by any means. Uh, Quilled Wolf is a 2-2 for 1 and a green. You can pay 5 and a green, and it gets plus 4, plus 4 until the end of the turn. Uh, I actually think this is just a really good solid 2-drop. Uh, it's a 2-2 two, two for 2, so it's a bear perfectly on curve. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, on top of that, if you've happened to get him late game, uh, you have a mana sink. You can actually pump him up late game, and so maybe he can get in for some damage or trade off or something along those lines, in which case he's more than worth it. So I think this is just a very good two drop that can have relevance in the late game, and I think being relevant at multiple points in the game is obviously the biggest uh, upside that you can possibly have on a card. So I do like this card. I still like the Provisioner better because it's good without having to sink too much mana into it, uh, but this is definitely a serviceable two drop. Uh, Merciless Resolve is an instant for two and a black. As an additional cost to cast it, you have to sacrifice a creature or a land, and then you draw two cards. Uh, I'm sure there's some kind of aristocrat style deck. Uh, I would imagine at least that there is. I could be very wrong in that. Or maybe at least like a zombie tribal where, uh, you can get some reoccurring value off of sacking your creatures. In that instance, I feel like this card would be perfectly fine, and honestly, you'll probably find uh, an extra land or an, uh, a very low drop creature that has lost relevance throughout the game that you could sacrifice to this no matter what, uh, in which case it's probably good, but it is just a card draw spell. It's not super exciting by any means, uh, and so it's, it's not high on my list of picks. Uh, Hulking Devil is a 5-2 vanilla creature for 3 uh, and a red I really don't like creatures like this that die super, super easily. What I find happens most often uh, is they trade off for something much less powerful than themselves, and in that case, they're very much not worth it. I'd much rather have a, a four drop like the Provisioner, which is going to come in, survive a little bit better, and also pro uh, uh, provide more of a uh, aggressive gameplay strategy than this that comes in might attack in once, but it's probably just going to die to a 2-2 or something along those lines. And so for that reason, not super excited by these. I tend to avoid uh, creatures that have very small butts. Um, Kessig Dire Swine is a 6-6, six, 4-4, six, four, four, and 2 green. Uh, it does feature Delirium, so it has Trample as long as there are four or more card types among cards in your graveyard. Uh, I think this is a perfectly fine 6-drop. It's not amazing, but... Uh, late game, you'll probably find that you might have four more card types in your graveyard. If you do have some, there's a lot of things that enable Delirium, so in that instance, if you picked up those cards, uh, you'll find that it's pretty easy to get there. And a 6-6 six, six for 6 with Trample is pretty good. Uh, it's definitely a, a finisher for the game, which I like. Uh, in general, though, not super excited. Honestly, I still like the Provisioner a lot more, uh, and just in general. So I, I'm not a huge fan of this, but would definitely take it if I just needed a, a beater at the end of the game. Uh, Creeping Dread is an enchantment for three and a black. At the beginning of your upkeep, each player discards a card. Each opponent who discarded a card that shares a card type with the card you discarded loses three life. Uh, this is a very interesting one. I don't like it. Uh, it's very, very slow, uh, and it's very dependent upon whatever your opponent has in their hand. And a lot of times at the end of the game, they'll just, or towards the end of the game, I should say, later turns, they might just not have many cards uh, to actually discard, in which case nothing happens. This is a very dead card. So I don't really like this one, honestly. I just don't think it's very good. Uh, Moonlight Hunt, Hunt, excuse me, is an instant for one and a green. Uh, choose target creature you don't control. Each creature you control that's a wolf or a werewolf deals damage uh, equal to its power to that creature. So this is a very specific but very strong kill spell in the wolf deck. Uh, wolves are very, very popular in this set. They're fantastic. Uh, werewolves, the, the flipping of the werewolves is always really, really exciting. But this is a very specific spell to that deck. Because of that, I'd rather have the cards that make this card good before picking this up. Uh, it does give you some direction, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but if you don't end up in that deck, it's very, very dead. Uh, and so for that reason, not super excited by it, definitely would not first pick it. <clears throat> uh, Call the Bloodline is an enchantment for one and a black. You can pay one, discard a card, uh, and you put a 1-1 black vampire knight creature token with lifelink onto the battlefield. 
Uh, only activate this ability once each turn. Honestly, this would be so much better without that once per turn clause. Uh, if it didn't have that, I would say it's actually very, very good. Uh, but with that, I'm not super excited by it. It does give you a little bit of relevance in maybe the late game where you just need somewhere to ditch some of your extra lands that you're drawing or something like that. But getting a 1-1 uh, with lifelink late game doesn't seem like it's going to win you anything. It doesn't seem like it's really going to get you anywhere. So I could be wrong in evaluating this, but I don't find that this is a very strong card, uh, at least in limited. So not super excited by it. Uh, <laughs> uh, this is a really interesting one. So, uh, Triskaidekaphobia, uh, is an enchantment for three and a black. At the beginning of your upkeep, choose one. Uh, each player with exactly 13 life loses the game, then each player gains one life. Or, each player with exactly 13 life loses the game, then each player loses one life. So, this is a really weird card, uh, all based around the number 13. If you look very closely within the art, there's a lot of references to 13 as a number. There's... Uh, 13 different blood stains, 13 things. It's it's very, very cool. But uh, in draft, I don't know. I feel like it would be really fun to try it. Uh, I feel like if I was drafting this just for fun, this is exactly what I would take just to see if I can make it work. Don't know if that's really accurate and definitely probably not the best thing to do. I think the provisioner is better. So far, this pack has been very bad, by the way. Uh, but I don't know. It seems kind of fun. Uh, we'll, we'll hold it here for now. Uh, <laughs> cat, gat staff, staff, gat staff, uh, arsonist. I'm very sorry if I'm mispronouncing that. Uh, is a five four for four in a red, and at the beginning of the upkeep, upkeep. Excuse me. If no spells were cast last turn, transform it. Uh, into the ravagers. So it's a six five with menace, and at the beginning of your upkeep, if a player casts two or more spells last turn, transform it. Uh, so it just kind of goes back and forth. Honestly, this is a very like very good uh five drop in my opinion uh, it's a five four for five so it's it's pretty much on curve with the stats that you would like uh and then it is at the beginning of each upkeep not just yours so that's actually really really relevant uh depending on the deck you're against they may not be playing much on their turn uh and honestly late game uh there might not be a lot of plays to make anyway uh and so i feel like it would be fairly easy to transform it into a six five with menace which would be really really good uh and so honestly I'm going to say the uh, the educated pick uh, would probably be the arsonist, but the fun pick would be Triskaidekaphobia, which is 100% what I would pick. So, uh, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please make sure to leave a like or a comment down below. And as always, please make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our awesome content. But with that, I'm going to get out of here. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next Crack-A-Pack episode.